So if you have had your mind blown recently playing with ChatGPT, did you know that OpenAI, the same company that built it, also has an application programming interface? That's a dumb word that nobody needs to know. But we call it an API, and what it means is that they have already done the heavy lifting for us, and they have small little bits of code, ways of interacting with it that you can take and put in your own applications. And that is how you can build a business in 2023 that can make a ton of money. This is a great time to be an entrepreneur. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a bunch of examples of what it's capable of to get your mind thinking about new businesses. So to get access to these same examples, all you have to do is go to openai.com, sign up, and you'll be in this screen. Let me walk you through it. You're gonna to wanna to think about how you're helping your customer either be more productive, save them time, save them effort, save them energy, save them money. And these are the different categories you can think about it in. Artificial intelligence is great at answers. We spend a lot of time searching for things, using Google, asking other employees. Tools like this can help us get them much quicker. The next category is classification, where you might say, I have a whole bunch of photos. Can you find out how many of them have a dog? Or you can look through a bunch of documents and say, classify the ones that are legal versus the ones that are more creative, where you wanna take a whole bunch of things and put them into different buckets. Now the code category is more for the engineering types. When you're actually trying to put an app together, a few bugs can be a whole lot of expense. And this can help you find those bugs, write the code quickly in the first place. It helps you be a better engineer, less time, less money. The conversation category, one of my favorites, it's kind of entertainment, but it's also kind of that personal experience. The real thing that AI is bringing that Google just hasn't brought us in the past, not lists of links, but actual conversations, actual feelings, actual interactions with memory. This is important. Utilizing GTP3's backend to create applications like this, I think could be a game changer. This is the category where I see the most growth personally. This world is full of so much data that it's hard to even make sense out of it anymore, but that is where these kind of tools kick in. The generalization tools will take large summaries and turn them into small summaries. This is the TLDR of API interfaces. The next category is translation. So you might think English to Spanish or language to language, but this can also be engineering speak. You can go from Python to C++, or you can go from Python to English. It actually makes sense. A little bit like summaries, but more intuitive. So this can be for engineers going from something like Python to Javascript and back again, but it also can simply be from Python to English. Sometimes if you look at a bunch of code and you don't understand it, it can be a lifesaver to have that summarized into English words so that you know what it does before you spend all the time going in and trying to figure out exactly what's going on. And the final one is just data transformation. So this is pretty interesting. Like if you take this airport code extractor, it's taking an English sentence and turning it into airport codes. So let's start with the answer section. So imagine you want to build an app that just answers questions, especially in specific and obscure industries. What's the human life expectancy in the United States? What's the square root of a banana? I'm sure we'll have lots of Q and A's in the future about medicine, about housing, about cars, all the things that cause problems in the world and we quickly want answers. And depending on what business you wanna start, these can come in different flavors. It can be straight facts if you wanna be more specific about what to do next, or it can be more conversational if you're looking for guidance. Factual questions are along these lines. What orbits around the earth? The moon. How many moons does Mars have? Two. Now let's jump into some classification examples. So look at how incredible this is. The fact that it can even think of some of the buckets for you just blows my mind. If you give it a list, Apple, Facebook, and FedEx, and you say break this into categories, it knows which ones are social media and which ones do delivery. FedEx is different than Apple and Facebook. Although to be honest, Apple's kind of not so much a social media company, but it's okay. I get where they're going. Now imagine you're working with a big company and you want to build them a tool where they can actually go in and find out if the majority of the people that are interacting with them on social media are having a negative or a positive example. You can use this API to build something like that for them. So it can read small bits of information, whether that comes from like a feedback survey, a tweet or a Yelp review, and it can say negative, negative, positive, positive, and then simply break those into some kind of a graph for someone like a CEO to quickly understand the sentiment on social media. Now extracting keywords can be really important also. This can be used in an SEO context. So if you're trying to help your company rank, for example, go find some of your competitors that are ranking above you, extract what the main keywords are, and then check yours and see if you're hitting similar ones or if maybe some keywords are popping out of the text that you're writing that might be not exactly what you want. 
Now, SQL Translate, if you don't know what SQL is, it's simply a way to communicate with a database so that you can find information in it. A lot of times it's more like a three-dimensional spreadsheet. You're saying, go to this row, go to this column, find this key and put them together and get me the information I need. It can be very tricky on occasion to navigate your way through systems. And sometimes it takes engineers years to get super familiar with all of the data that they're housing and figure out how to quickly and optimally get to it. Now you can actually just write in English, go find that data for me and write that SQL query, which can then go into a system and pull it right out for you. This is super helpful for app development and for companies and all sorts of use cases. Lots of the internet's data is in databases like this. And in some cases it's lost simply because people forgot how to get to it. Now taking code and turning it into English is so cool. Let's check out this example. Here is some code written in Python 3. Impossible for anyone who doesn't understand programming to understand. It just looks like a bunch of spaces and X's and quotes. But look, a sample response gives us something intuitive even for a regular person to understand. So listen, I don't claim to be a good programmer. This stuff can get really complicated. When I've goofed around with it in the past, sometimes I've had success, but oftentimes I get lost. And I love the idea of these AI tools helping me actually be a programmer that can get things done the right way the first time. Now, the ability to translate between programming languages must be a godsend for engineers who need to take something that was built in a programming language they're not familiar with, convert it over so that they can actually utilize all of that knowledge that they have about the programming language they spent their lives working in. There is an API that actually can do that. So if you work at a company where this is a problem, you can build something and think of the value you would provide to the entire organization. Or if you're a freelancer, imagine how many times somebody might say, hey, can you help me with all of this code that somebody else built that doesn't work anymore, I had to fire them. So you run it in a system like this that actually takes it, turns it into English, lets you understand what it's trying to do, then you take it, put it into the programming language that you actually work with. Now all of a sudden, you're pretty close to being able to work with it in a way that's most convenient to you, something that would have been impossible, potentially even making you start from scratch in the past. Okay, now let's talk about the conversation aspect. Now, chat GPT, it is a conversational big brother to this system, and it is absolutely incredible. I'm making videos about it all the time, but it can write poems, and it can make music, and it can synthesize information, and it can help you create in the most creative way possible. And I think that that's something that we just haven't really seen from any system before these kind of breakthroughs. And this API lets you take what it can do, put it into your own application with your own data for your own use cases, and that means you can build a company, you can have a startup, you can be more valuable, you can make money. There is a lot of ways that that can really play out in your life. How many times do we interact on social media to talk to somebody? Now, when you're really talking to a celebrity, you know that there's just no chance they're going to have time to write back to you. Maybe if you make some super trolly comment, they will. And that's worth it for some people for that attention. But a tool like this could really help the world because then you can actually interact potentially with AIs or with something else, but get that feeling that you're in the room conversating, you're learning, you're asking questions. You can ask, what have you been up to? Watching old movies. You've been watching anything interesting? Friends, you can just have conversations. And especially when this gets combined with voice to text, so it's not always tapping with your thumbs, that sounds a lot like, you know, talking on the phone with a friend. Something people love to do all the time, sitting around dinner, talking with your friends. All of that stuff is going to be able to move into applications that people could be building in the future. These APIs can also be customized with personalities. Do you want somebody who's got a more laid back attitude? Somebody who sounds more like a surfer? Do you want somebody who's just like, fact, 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 here's how you get ahead in life. I can be your inspiration. I can be a leader for you. Or do you want somebody to just listen to you while you talk? Someone who's just sort of sympathetic. All of those kind of tweaks can also be made. They can be added to your experience, custom made for the audience that you're gonna try to market your business to. And to prove that, check out this function in the API. Marva is a factual chatbot, but he's also sarcastic. How many pounds are in a kilogram? This again, question mark? There's 2.2 pounds in a kilogram. Please make a note of this. Isn't that cool? It's like Marvin's a bit sarcastic. He's probably heard this from the person prompting it before. What does HTML stand for? Oh, what was Google too busy? Hypertext markup language. And the T is for try to ask better questions in the future. I mean, to me, that's just a fun experience. That's kind of unique in the way that uh, computers have always just sort of like given me what I've wanted, but they've never really like talked back at me. I personally like that kind of feeling. 
So there's something to be said about having a machine that can just take life a little bit more lightly, just slowly ease some of those emotions that we always have when everything is just like fact, fact, fact driven. All right, now let's go to the generalization category. So certainly we can be inundated with information nowadays, but tools like this really can help. Let me show you some examples. The first thing you can do with this API, simply summarize it for a second grader. How many times have you gone to another industry and when you get into the weeds, all you hear is jargon. This can be in medicine, this automotive, and almost every industry, even my girlfriend who's a magician, they get into the intricate weeds of like how the shuffles and stuff work, and I don't understand it. But if I threw it in something like this, summarized for a second grader, it would be like, oh, they're just cutting the cards in half with one hand. This is something that makes sense to me. Now summarize it for a second grader, a fifth grader, or just general TLDR summarization. There is an API here for you, depending on what kind of summarization you want, here it is. If you want movies simplified into emojis, done. Back to the Future, Batman, Transformers, Star Wars, boom, there's your emoji response. What about when you just need some new product ideas? I mean, how many companies are spending lots of money asking their employees to come up with some ideas, suss out the market, figure out what we should name things, where it should go, what the right fit is? Now, these kind of summarization tools can help you with that sort of thing too. So here is a product name generator. So the product description is a homemade milkshake maker. Some seed words, you want it to be fast, healthy, and compact. Here are some product names, home shaker, fit shaker, quick shake, shake maker. And now that it basically knows what the object is, it thinks to itself, okay, I've seen some stuff that is sold before. Here's some product names, apt fit, omni secure, fit all, adapt shoes, that you can start crossing things off of and building on. And then take your winners, put it back in here, generate some more, cut some out, bring your winners in here and reiterate very quickly until you find that boom idea that you just know that you want. By the way, if you've liked this content so far, I am still under 1,000 subscribers. I'm really hoping to break that mark in the next month. So I'm wearing my Smash It shirt, even though I have it yet, but I'm assuming we're gonna get there. If you smash that subscribe button, that like button, make a comment, that'd be super helpful. Now here's one that absolutely blew my mind. One thing that I really thought humans might do for a long time before computers could ever catch up would be analogies, but if you want an app in the app store that says, hey, we'll make you an analogy from whatever text you have, you can plug into this right now and start selling that app. I mean, that's a tough one. And in some sense, this channel is usually about trying to take something a little more complicated, make it a more simple analogy, kind of summarize it. This is like doing the only thing I think I can kind of do a little bit. Okay, but here's the big wow. Here's the analogy. Questions are arrows in that dumbest thing I've ever heard to put into an analogy. It came up with questions are like arrows in that they both have the power to pierce through the surface and uncover the truth that lies beneath. I mean, I don't think I could do any better. So analogies are a great way for us to summarize concepts. And the thought that AI can do that and that you could maybe build that into a product that you could sell right now today is a game changer. So figure out ways to make money using this stuff for your audience. So find an industry that you know, something you're passionate about, and think about ways where an analogy creator could really help people understand the bigger concepts and the nuances in the same sentence. Now notes the summary is another great example. I mean, how many times have you been on the phone or in a meeting and you're sort of scribbling down certain words because somebody's talking so quickly and you just can't capture it all. I often have just little, like one word here, one word here. Sometimes they're not even like formatted in the exact line. And then later they're just like these keywords that I use to kind of put together what I really need to when the meeting's over. But that can be done much better now. So just throwing in words, Tom says profits are up 50% and then boom. You end up with a sample response that says, at the meeting, Tom reported that profits had increased 50%, something that people can just read and understand. Now, the first step for me to create a YouTube script is to start with an outline. That's actually the most important part of all the videos. And now we can do something right from scratch, so helpful. Look at this power, an essay outline. Create an outline for an essay about Nikola Tesla and his contributions to technology. One sentence. The sample response is a nice outline, an introduction. Who was Nikola Tesla? An overview of his contributions to technology. Then it breaks into a nice historical organized timeline, early life and education. 
where and when was Tesla born, his education, his early career. Then it moves on to when he started actually contributing to technology. It goes into his later years and then has a nice summary conclusion at the end. And then you can even use the tool to plug in each of those and generate some sample text. It's incredible. Or you go the other route and, you know, Google something like that, find a huge text, summarize it down. You can go either way with it, but it's super helpful in the creation of YouTube scripts, but also presentations or whatever you're doing in your industry, whether it's marketing material to the customer, whether it's B2B that you're trying to get sales on, or the CEO trying to communicate your new vision. Ah, there is so much that we can do with GPT-3, the little brother to chat GPT, but the one that has an API you can plug into your applications, the one that you can build a business around right now, the one that can make you money and scale. How about a recipe creator? Eat at your own risk warning, because yeah, it might put together some gross stuff, but it also might invent something totally unique. You know, there's so many ingredients and they can come together in a nearly infinite combination of ways, but why don't we ask AI to sift through all of those combinations and come up with something that's a much better starting point. So here's a list of ingredients. We call it Frito pie. It needs Fritos, chili, shredded cheddar cheese, sweet wine, blah, blah, blah. And its sample response is an actual order of how to cook it. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Spread a layer of Fritos on the bottom of a nine by 13 inch baking sheet. And then, you know, you can just read through it. Or there it is, man, a recipe invented by GPT-3. But how about this? You, somebody calls you and they're giving you directions to their house, you're in the car, you don't write it down. Imagine if something could just listen to that conversation and actually pull out the bullet points, something that you could maybe glance at without getting into a car accident. How about a restaurant review creator? So if you give it the prompt, write a restaurant review about these notes, you give it the name of the restaurant, you say lobster was great, but it was noisy, service was polite, prices are good. It can put together something that really you could cut and paste into Yelp or trip review and you could say, I recently visited the Blue Wharf and I had a wonderful experience. The lobster was excellent, but the only downside was the noise level. And it just sounds like something that people could easily digest. So in this example, we're gonna actually translate from one programming language to another. Now, Python and Haskell are two very different programming languages. They have very different principles. They have very different syntax. So to take this small function, def predict probable, open parentheses, you pass in a variable, and then you move it into something that Haskell could understand. Pretty incredible. Now, chat GPT can be used for bug finding. We don't really have that in the API yet, but just keep in mind that these systems are getting very close to solving that problem. So I would not be surprised if an API that can find bugs is right around the corner. Check out this, this is a JavaScript one line function. So when you're coding in JavaScript, certainly things can get really spaced out. Now, a lot of times those kind of help you see the indentations. They can make the code a lot longer to scroll through, but they also give you kind of a visual blocky sense of where things happen, but when you wanna compress it down because your page is just getting unruly, something like this can be really helpful. So using a list comprehension to convert this information into a one simple line that you can just glance at and kind of have an understanding of how it works, Wow, what a nice summary. Even in code, it's not just in English text. And our final category, transformations. So some of the ones that we haven't seen before, how about mood to color? Turn a text description into a color. This CSS code is for a color that's like a blue sky at dusk background color, and it comes up with the actual hexadecimal. How cool is that? It sounds weird, but a lot of times when you're just like feeling around in the color space for what you want, yeah, people try to describe it. Like, can you give me something that's like sort of skin tone, something that's earthy? I don't know, those kind of words to use them and actually get, you know, hexadecimal responses is like, that is so cool. Imagine how Photoshop might look in the future when it's plugged into these tools, or maybe you will be the one to go out there and build that, and I will gladly switch off of Photoshop to use your tool. How about the airport code extractor? One of my favorite examples. How many times has somebody said, oh, I'm going on a vacation from Las Vegas to Hawaii, but then, you know, when you actually go to buy a ticket, you're like, hmm, what's the exact airport code for Hawaii? Now you can just say it and it pulls the information out, which means in the future, hopefully finding out how much tickets are is just about talking to it because the right information is extracted, put into the system automatically, and it gives you back a price. You know, something that just makes it more convenient, something that people might actually wanna pay a small service fee for the convenience of. Now, calculate the complexity is actually something that 
if you're an engineer and you write something that takes way more compute than it should, that it makes the slow experience for either the user or the backend system, or it uses up way more resources and costs the company, is just a really big drain on an organization or on an entrepreneur. So understanding the time complexity, which is really just about optimization. It's just about optimizing, in the other cases, the decisions you make in your life. In this case, about the actual physical requirements of how much compute it's gonna take to get something done on a computer system. Super useful if that's a problem that you have to deal with in your job. Now, extracting contact information is super useful, especially for something like lead generation, where maybe people are leaving voicemails with like, call me back at this number, and you have all these different kind of weird artifacts in what has been translated from the conversation, or you're simply just given this old data set, or it's all in these like letter type essays, and you wanna just suck it all up, put all of the address information in some kind of a format where it fits in your database so that you can use it for other reasons, what a great extraction. And probably the most useless thing on here, but maybe there's a business out there would be the micro horror story creator. Not because, I don't know, maybe there is a market for the micro, micro horror stories, but honestly, it just shows you that you can quickly make stories, entertainment, tweets, uh, summaries of movies, something, you know, babble about uh, superheroes, like whatever it is that you just want to like micro story, micro story, micro story to entertain somebody for a few seconds between a meeting or just where they're like, you know, sitting there waiting for somebody. You can do something like this. Maybe you make an app that's just like micro stories, all original about some weird niche that nobody is actually going to spend the time to write stories about. So in this example, if you prompt the API with some information, like the topics about breakfast, uh, two sentence story uh he always stops crying when i pour the milk on his cereal yada yada it comes up with like the wind was howling through the night shaking the windows of the house with a sinister force but you know obviously that's gonna be like star wars and spider-man and all that stuff soon or maybe you invent your own ip and all these micro stories you can build a fan base around something you know that's not marvel and disney maybe as a creator you've already come up with a, a world like a you know lord of the Rings style world and now it hasn't got out there to the level that you want but with these micro stories and it knows what kind of information is in your world, you can start getting people engaged in a new way. This is an API that people can use. And what that means as an application programming interface is just a tool where they can do the heavy lifting. You will pay a fee for the service, but if you're selling something else that you've built on the front end for more, there is a lot of profit that can be made. And the technical difficulty to implement this is relevant because it's not something just anybody can do, but it is something that is worlds and worlds easier than building this kind of stuff from scratch. And it's more powerful than anything we've seen before. Getting a quote from an engineer or maybe even learning it yourself. Let me show you an example of what you might be getting yourself into. If we go back to the airport code extractor, here was the text, here was the output. This is a small Python script to give you some semblance of what you would need to do. Now, obviously you have to understand how to download an IDE and kind of actually program something and actually run it in the first place and then put it on the server. So it's not for just com the completely faint of heart, but there's a lot of tutorials out on the internet. And if you are super dedicated to making this work, I totally believe that given maybe a couple months, even from scratch, you could probably cobble this thing together. And if it works and you get a fan base and you get some money, you can always expand a team out from them. Maybe it's a prototype. Just think about implementing something like this in Python. In fact, you can even run code like this on Colab. So you can go to Google Docs, basically, open up a Colab, say, I want a Python instance, and start playing with this. And when you get what you want, you're only one more step away from turning that into either an app or a URL or something else to build a business around. So play with it, get familiar, let your imagination run wild. And if you see that perfect use case, this is an opportunity with artificial intelligence that we haven't had in the history of the world before. And the API that OpenAI has given us is an awesome tool. And, you know, feed that entrepreneur spirit because it's well worth it, man. I've been an entrepreneur a couple times and uh, I just love it. Like, it's always fun to attempt to change the world if you're in the right mindset 
you wake up happy, you wake up engaged. Uh, entrepreneurship is just wonderful. So let me know in the comments below if you have some awesome use cases for this API that you can think of. I would love to start the conversation. We're still under a thousand subscribers, so please hit subscribe. And if you write a comment, I'm going to read it. Like I don't have that many to read and I literally love responding to them and I love the idea of building and engaging with this community. Smash the subscribe button and leave a comment below. And this video that Google's showing you right here, well, that's something that the algorithm has already determined you might like if you like this video. So I would encourage you to click on it and check out more Curious Future. Love you guys. See you in the next video.